The Corinthian Canal, a testament to human engineering and determination, stands as a captivating link between two seas and a passage through time. Situated in Greece, this narrow waterway traverses the Isthmus of Corinth, connecting the Ionian Sea's Gulf of Corinth with the Aegean Sea's Saronic Gulf. As a testament to both ancient ambition and modern achievement, the canal weaves together history, technology, and awe-inspiring scenery. The concept of a canal through the Isthmus of Corinth dates back to antiquity. In fact, both the Roman Emperor Nero and the ancient Greeks considered the idea. However, the complexities of engineering and the financial burdens associated with the project hindered its realization. It wasn't until the late 19th century that the canal's construction commenced, finally opening for navigation in 1893. The realization of this ancient vision marked a pivotal moment in Greece's engineering history. The construction of the Corinthian Canal posed significant challenges. The rocky terrain and steep cliffs presented formidable obstacles that engineers had to overcome. The excavation process required immense effort and the use of explosives to carve a navigable channel. The narrow width of the canal at around 82 feet at its base and the shallow depth of about 26 feet made it a technical marvel of its time. While the Corinthian Canal provides a direct route for ships, its practicality is limited due to its dimensions. Large vessels are unable to navigate through this narrow waterway, relegating its use primarily to smaller ships, private yachts, and tourist activities. Nevertheless, the canal still serves as a strategic shortcut for vessels, bypassing the lengthy and treacherous journey around the Peloponnese Peninsula. Beyond its engineering significance, the Corinthian Canal offers a visual spectacle that attracts visitors from around the world. The steep walls of the canal, carved into the natural landscape, create a breathtaking panorama. Tourists gather on the bridge that spans the canal, eagerly watching as ships pass through the confined waterway. The surrounding scenery, with its towering cliffs and serene waters, adds to the allure of the area. Maintaining the Corinthian Canal remains a continuous challenge. Erosion, landslides, and the natural forces of the environment threaten its stability. Additionally, the canal's limited navigational capacity restricts its utility for modern shipping demands. Nonetheless, its historical and cultural significance, coupled with its role as a tourist attraction, ensure that efforts to preserve and maintain the canal persist. In conclusion, the Corinthian Canal is more than just a physical waterway. It's a symbol of human ambition, ingenuity, and the desire to conquer geographical barriers. This marvel of engineering stands as a living testament to ancient dreams and modern achievements. As ships pass through its narrow confines, they carry with them the echoes of history and the triumphant spirit of overcoming obstacles to shape the world's landscape. Visiting the Corinthian Canal is not just witnessing an engineering marvel, it's stepping into a passage through time and marveling at the wonders of human achievement. The Panama Canal, an iconic engineering marvel, stands as a testament to human ingenuity and determination. Nestled at the crossroads of North and South America, this man-made waterway has transformed global trade, rewritten maritime history, and solidified its place as a conduit of progress and prosperity. The idea of a canal through the Isthmus of Panama dates back centuries. As early as the 16th century, explorers and visionaries recognized the potential of such a passage to connect the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. However, it wasn't until the late 19th and early 20th centuries that the canal's construction became a reality. The initial attempt at building the canal was led by the French engineer Ferdinand de Lesseps, known for his success with the Suez Canal. However, the challenging terrain, including dense jungles and disease-infested regions, proved overwhelming for the technology and medical knowledge of the time. 
After years of struggle, the French effort ultimately succumbed to engineering challenges and health crises. The United States took over the project in 1904 after the French efforts failed, and under the leadership of Chief Engineer John F. Stevens and later George W. Goethals, the canal was completed in 1914. The Panama Canal, under U.S. control since its completion in 1914, has long been a symbol of American influence in the region. However, this control has been a source of contention, with Panama and many other countries viewing it as a vestige of colonialism and an infringement on Panama's sovereignty. Efforts to renegotiate the terms of control began in the early 20th century, but it wasn't until the 1970s that serious negotiations gained momentum. The Carter administration in the U.S. and the Torrios government in Panama recognized the need for a new agreement that would address the issues of sovereignty, control, and economic benefits associated with the canal. The Panama Canal uses a series of locks to raise and lower ships as they move through the canal. There are three sets of locks, two on the Pacific side and one on the Atlantic side. Each set consists of a series of chambers that are filled with water or empty to adjust the water level and thus the ship's elevation. When a ship enters a lock, it's guided by tugboats and locomotives called mules. The mules help position and stabilize the ship as it moves through the lock chambers. The lock gates close behind the ship to hold the water inside. As the ship moves through the series of locks, it is raised or lowered to match the water levels of the next section of the canal. This elevation change allows the ship to traverse the hilly terrain of the isthmus. Once a ship has passed through all the locks, it can continue its journey across the narrowest part of Panama, completing the ocean-to-ocean -ocean transit. In 2016, the Panama Canal underwent a major expansion known as the Panama Canal Expansion, or the New Panamax Project. This involved the construction of new locks, larger and wider than the original ones, to accommodate larger vessels known as New Panamax ships. The expansion has not only boosted efficiency and reduced shipping costs, but has also had a profound impact on global commerce redirecting trade flows and bolstering the significance of key ports and shipping lanes worldwide. And by doubling the canal's capacity and accommodating ships nearly three times the size of the previous Panamax vessels, it has altered the dynamics of maritime trade in the local waters. Number of ships transiting the Panama Canal in a normal year. Around 13,000 to 14,000 ships pass through the Panama Canal. However, the number of ships passing through the canal has decreased due to the drought in the area. By 2023, an average of 32 ships will be allowed to transit the canal per day. This number is down from an average of 40 ships per day in 2022. Overall, the Panama Canal is a marvel of engineering that has revolutionized maritime transportation by offering a direct and more efficient route between the world's two major oceans.